Hey sports fans, welcome back to the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Just wanted to give you a few foolish thoughts on the weekly stories going on here. First off, start off with the foolish anti-curse. All I do is say how the Tigers aren't worth watching. They weren't going to win any more games on the road trip. I go one in like 11 or if it's a, or something like that. And they sweep Houston. Woo, go Tigers. Larry Myers gets a win. Fulmer gets a win. Boyd gets a win. Right, go Tigers. Now that I say that, they're probably going to lose to Oakland. But, hey, at least they got some wins. Now, other stories. Uh, Michigan recruiting. Matt Dubeck is out. He's on his way to Mississippi State. And he's been replaced by Courtney Morgan. That's an interesting um, switch. Courtney Morgan did work at Fresno State. He did work at UCLA. And, of course, he was an offensive lineman at Michigan and got his degree there, too. So definitely has the Michigan connection and has a nice West Coast connection. So we'll see if that helps Michigan on the recruiting trail. So that's kind of a tie-in to the next big, big story. Xavier Worthy, the top 100 player, the top, the number 13 wide receiver in the country who committed to Michigan, has uncommitted now. He On social media, he said he wanted out of his letter of intent. This is a crazy story. If you don't know, he graduated high school early. He wanted to enroll early in Michigan, like start in January. He came to Michigan. I mean, he was in the state of Michigan. And for whatever reason, the program did not accept him in. And so he was just sitting around, just biding his time. And the domino started falling. Giles Jackson, the guy who was really, you know, a good friend of his, kind of helped recruit him to Michigan. He kind of got passed up in the wide receiver pool. And so Giles Jackson transferred to Washington. And so then that made more speculation. Is Worthy going to leave now that Jackson is gone? And people are like, eh, maybe, maybe not. And, well, there was some smoke, and now the fire's there. It just really brings into a question, again, how Michigan, and I would have to say their arrogance, the Michigan arrogance, really hurts the football team. Michigan has a hard, hard time getting recruits to come in. It, it's, it always seems to be such a difficult thing. And obviously, I've never transferred to Michigan, so I can only read what other people say, is that like the Michigan program will rarely accept classes from another school. And... I don't understand how this was such a thing. And it's like Michigan academics has just kicked Michigan football in the teeth. Michigan had one, maybe he was like their best recruit offensively besides my, the quarterback. And now he just doesn't come in because of like he couldn't qualify for some reason. And it's just unknown why. It's such a downer. And it's so disappointing. Another story, Michigan was really high up on the linebacker out of Penn State's. So I think it was... Oh, shoot, his name eludes me all of a sudden. But he went to the uh, Parsons, maybe. I, I don't think that's right. But he went to the portal right, the off season, and Michigan's like, oh, good chance to get this guy. Former five-star linebacker, recru recruited him. Like, maybe he can come back to Michigan. Maybe it'd be a chance. No. It, th there was even smoke there. And then, no, he just ends up going, I think, to West Virginia. It's like, again, it's just the tr stupid transfer thing. Michigan just handicaps itself. And again, I go back to the arrogance. We are Michigan. Don't get me wrong, that's cool tradition, but man, let it go. Michigan hasn't been Michigan in a long, long time. It's time to get with the uh, nowadays. Like, you know what, don't be such a stickler on these things. I, I really wonder how Harbaugh and the athletic department is feeling about this, that uh, academics are costing them like one of their best players out of the recruiting class. Speaking of classes, though, Another story, tangent over, basketball. Story came out that Isaiah Livers gave his farewell via social media saying, thank you, Michigan, so it's widely expected he's going to go away and foregoing his year at Michigan. He could have one more year. Austin Davis is going to forego his sixth year. I can get that, sixth year. And he's going to leave. And, of course, earlier, Mike Smith said he wasn't coming back and Sean Day Brown Jr. wasn't coming back. So... The one who is coming back for sure, Eli Brooks, which is good. You're hoping you get one guard to come back, and Eli Brooks is. So, But you're really losing a lot of production from your team if all those guys are gone and you only bring back Brooks. And the X Factor, oh, Franz Wagner has not said anything about him coming back or not coming back. It's interesting. I think he's predicted to be a lottery draft pick, so I would totally encourage him to go. Go get your money, man. Go get your money. 
But all the other lottery picks, projected lottery picks, have said they are coming out. They're going to go to the draft, but not him. So I don't know if there's anything to that or not. I fully expect him to go to the NBA, and he should go to the NBA. But he hasn't said it yet. Michigan, of course, is going to have the number one recruiting class, at least as of now, coming in. And so it's going to be up to Juwan Howard to kind of balance all that. I think he's going to look at the transfer portal just a little bit. But who is going to be out there that's going to be willing to sacrifice their role, like Chandy Brown and Mike Smith did? Chandy Brown was a double-digit score starter. I think it was at Wake Forest. And then Mike Smith... He was like number four in the country, 23 points a game at Columbia. And both guys put aside their main game and went together for the team. Who is Joanna Howard going to get to do that? Hey, let me know your thoughts. I appreciate them. And I appreciate all the subscribers. Until I see you guys next time, always go blue.